left and come to the junction then where we're turning right, then it's just a straight road on the Jalalabad Road. This morning we are heading for a training camp located outside Kabul. The road is dangerous and regularly booby-trapped by the Taliban. It's very, very hard to get away from a suicide bomber. If they want to kill you, they will get in and try and kill you. But we are in uh, good armoured vehicles. We'll be able to withstand blasts. The threat just now is, is uh, magnet IEDs. No magnetic. They go up beside the vehicle, put it on it, stick. Just stick it on it. And you don't see nothing, especially in areas like that. No, you've, that's why you've got to observe everywhere. Everywhere. Yes, I, I enjoy it very much. The ideal job that I could do after leaving the military. And of course, everybody dreams about being a bodyguard all their life. They always watch James Bond in 007. This is a military training camp controlled by Afghan troops. This doesn't pose any problem for David. He holds the same status as a coalition soldier. Yes, it's a, an ISAF badge. A badge. That gives us a... This car in the ditch could be trapped. David doesn't stop. The track leads to a field of fire. David joins a dozen of Armour Group's employees who arrived from London the day before. All of them are former soldiers. This morning, David's job consists in reminding them of the protective techniques which have to be used in order to guarantee the safety of high-profile figures in war-driven areas. This is a formation for moving with client across open ground. So when the client moves across, they ha he has to have all-round protection. So if any contact happens, then one guy clears the path, the bodyguard, the bodyguard grabs the client and extracts with him, while the two guys put down cover fire. Do it, don't have to be in 
That week, David works in the night shift. He's in charge of monitoring the security of the camp. The guards are Afghans. He mistrusts them. But you've always, you always have that, that weariness about you of when they leave this camp, when they go elsewhere. Yeah. 
it is a concern, but it is quite, they blend in basically more with the traffic. So there's, there's a, an advantage and a disadvantage to every situation. Terrorist attacks are on the rise in Kabul. The feeling of insecurity generated by such an increase has benefited private military companies, financially speaking. Ariane Kentier is an official member of the United Nations Disarmament Commission. She's lived on the spot for three years. According to her, much of the city's safety is under the control of private companies. Que ce soit euh, de la sécurité physique immédiate, comme on a pu la voir, euh, bah, quand on a pu la voir sur la construction des routes, par exemple, la, la fameuse route entre Kaboul et Kandar, qui a quand même été construite sur deux ans avec d'énormes coûts pour protéger les travailleurs qui travaillent sur cette route, ou que ce soit de façon plus soft, je dirais, pendant les élections, par exemple. The money involved stems from donating countries such as European countries, Japan and the US. These security-related firms account for 20% of the country's reconstruction budgets. United Nations is not an exception to the rule since the international body collaborates with these war professionals. of the leading European privately owned military related companies. Since September 11, they have sprung up alongside Tony Blair's interventionist foreign policy. Armour Group's headquarters is located in this small anonymous building in a nondescript suburb of London. The company is listed on the stock market and its offices look like those of any company. But business is carried out with any government or secret service. The firm employs more than 10,000 people in 38 different countries across the world. Headquartered, of course, in London, with regional operations in North America, South America, across Africa, the Middle East, particularly Iraq and Afghanistan, Russia and Southeast Asia. Our client base is the, the governments of Britain and America, principally, along with the oil and gas companies. Uh, diamond and gold extraction companies, uh, communications, which includes railways, airlines. There is uh, every encouragement for us to cooperate with the Foreign Office. We do not uh, enter new countries without notifying the Foreign Office. We explain to them what it is we're doing, and we seek comment from them. Armour Group is actually a temporary work agency. Its purpose is to generate temporary staffing in war-ridden areas. It's a job targeted at men. Yet the person in charge of human resources is a smart former female teacher, a far cry from the bulletproof vest style. Caroline here is our head of human resources. She finds our people, briefs them, recruits them, deploys them, and is responsible for their welfare. Our engagement, certainly, bon, plutôt les gens qui parlent, qui a une this, believe it or not, is our best man. The number of applicants willing to work within Armour Group is outstanding. This man comes from France. We will call him Sanchez. He's just left the Foreign Legion after having completed 15 years' service. He's already served in Guyana and in various African countries. The first step of the application starts with the curriculum. And the last mission uh, in the Legion was uh, in Djibouti, where I was a uh, uh, commando instructor. Uh, the biggest gap is the, is the client and 